What was the impetus, the driving force behind making the improvements here? Well, I, it's a good question. When we built Gillette originally, the only thing we were sure of was that over the life of this stadium, things would change in terms of what fans would want, how technology would change. And so we consciously left big open spaces. Both end zones were left wide open. Uh, most other stadiums of that vintage did two or three levels in the end zone. And when you think about it, it's the most expensive seats to build because you need lots of structure and they're the least desirable. We always thought that those spaces could be better utilized other ways. And then we also had left openings in the sidelines of the stadium and everywhere else because we were just sure that, that we would want the space to do new things. And over the last two decades, we have. Um, but as we started in 17 and 18, thinking about what the 20th anniversary of the building would be like in the, 20, in the 2021 season, we wanted to have big improvements. We got the south end zone kind of done, but then COVID shut, shut this down, and that's why we're, we're, we're a little bit late, but that's sort of the genesis. We always knew we were going to do something. We just didn't know what it would be. And, and 20 years later, spending $250 million was probably not what we had thought about 20 years earlier, but that's the way it goes. Well, it just builds the anticipation now as people are getting ready to come in for this season. What were the priorities? Once you made the decision, okay, we're going to do something big, what were the priorities? Well, it was always about being able to evolve the building in a way that fans wanted to be there. You'd like to control the product on the field, and obviously if a team is winning, people feel good. In, a, in the NFL, you, you can't control that no matter how hard and how badly you want to win, but what you can control is, is the physical environment, a place that our guests want to be in. Is it engaging? Is it fun? Is it comfortable? Do they have the amenities uh, that they want? And so we're always thinking about that, and with the two scoreboards, the new north end zone, but the south end zone, which unfortunately uh, started during the COVID season of 20 when no one was in the building, um, these are our fourth, fourth time we've changed the video boards out in the building in only a 20, whatever it is now, 22 year history. So we're constantly trying to make sure that the video technology is right and at the cutting edge. I'm not sure we'll be changing this new north end zone <laughs> video board anytime soon, but clearly the video board experience over the last two decades has changed dramatically. Um, and that was important to us, but also um, the way your guests get their food and beverage. When the building opened, it was, everything was a belly up, you know, I'll have this, I'll have that, and time consuming, cash-based transaction. Right. Today, and there are five new, um, uh, food and beverage stands opening just in that end zone, but there three of them are walk-in Where you grab and go what you want we now have ten facilities like that around the building so that the pace of the transaction coupled with the variety of what's available is just m much more dramatic than you could have ever even thought about in those days and, and we're seeing, you know, our guests just really like that. And, and we have zip-in facilities here now where you just put your credit card in as you're walking in and cameras watch what you take and you just walk out. We also have our marketplaces where you walk in and it's like a convenience store except with lots of fresh food. You pick and choose what you want and then you walk out very quickly at the end of it. So those are the types of things that we have here. I had a great shrimp sandwich upstairs during the Taylor Swift concert. Okay, so you saw. <laughs> it was fantastic, yeah. It was good. I'm surprised you walked away during the show. Was she on stage? It was before or, the okay. show. <laughs> but what, good. I mean, so you've experienced. Yeah. And the new ones, the, the new ones that we're building under the North End Zone video board, I think are really going to take it to another level. And then we'll just keep changing over facility. I mean, that's our goal, really. Every year we're doing 15 to 20 million dollars of capital improvements wow. but this was a real step function just it was finally time in the north end zone and one of the things we also wanted to do was to create a formal front door to Gillette Stadium it's just never had it like most stadiums they've got different gates and entry points and with all the land we have down here we just thought it was 
time to think about that. And so when we remade the north end zone and the back of the GP atrium has the 50 foot glass wall and the lighthouse now rises almost 230 feet into the air, we decided to push out into the parking lot um, between uh, the Cinema Deluxe and the Pro Shop and create a really dramatic entry so that there was a sense of place that made Gillette Stadium really stand out, but also it's created a four and a half acre plaza, the NL Plaza, where now when fans, they'll scan their ticket and then walk into this four and a half acre plaza that's landscaped with places to sit. So it's like a, it's like a transition point from where you've entered the building, but before you get into the seating bowl. And we think, it's, we think that'll become a, a new standard in, in sports also for people lucky enough with the type of footprint that we have around here. And I think that'll be the first thing most fans th see. And I think they'll just get a total wow from it. And uh, at least we're hoping they will. I can tell by the way you're talking about that, that it's one of those things that it sounds like you wanted and you know is going to make a difference. I just think about like the changes that we make around our homes, you know, and we can agonize over things and how much do we want to disrupt our lives. These, we're talking about big things here. What in this project really energized you? Well, I, I think everything does. For us though, and I'll give my dad, my dad always, the, the, the lighthouse and bridge that we had that symbolized New England, it was a small, but symbolic architectural uh, element to the original Gillette mm -hmm. Stadium that said, hey, we're in New England. And the bridge sort of mirrored the Longfellow Bridge and the lighthouse that we uh, had based the one, the original lighthouse off of was one that was off the coast of Rhode Island. But m my father in particular would always say, we've got to, when we redo that end zone, we've got to, we've got to make it functional and we've got to make a bigger statement. When we were first building Gillette, we weren't in a position to do that. And, and so I think thinking through how you could build a 230 foot almost lighthouse that, that didn't look completely clunky and out of place, but looked like it belonged, but also make it functional 365 days a year. And I, I think we've done that, and I think when people see it on television and then they come to maybe visit Boston or some other place in New England, they're going to be able to come and walk through that dramatic entry point I talked about in the NL Plaza and hang out, but then they're going to be able to actually enter at the bottom of the lighthouse, which is right at the end of the plaza as you get to the stadium and take an elevator up, you know, 23 stories and there's a 360 degree observation deck and go up, look around, see downtown Boston, see Providence and, and also be able to take a selfie uh, with the backdrop being the Super Bowl banners in the opposite end zone. I, it'll just make for a cool experience and bring the stadium to life 365 days a year. It's not just a design element anymore. It really is part it's of the functional. experience. Yeah, it's functional. We have a few surprises. Do you want to break that, that news right day. here? No, but on game day <laughs> for, for our season ticket members who are here to honor Tom uh, this Sunday, they'll get to see they'll get to see it first. So it'll be incorporated into game days in ways that the lighthouse couldn't before. And then going forward, it's a place for just New England sports fans or tourists to come and experience Gillette Stadium. So that'll be fun, but we, we love all of it. I gotta ask too, I mean, all of these changes, so much of it is about the fan experience, but you have World Cup games coming, you have the Army Navy game, which is huge. You know, it, it, it hasn't been out of the mid-Atlantic, but twice in the last time was in 1983. How important is it to the future of the events here to be making these changes now, to be able to say this is what we have to offer? I, it's a really good question. And we know that to attract things like the Army-Navy game and the World Cup, if you're not reinvesting in the building and creating unique elements and features to it, being a place where people want to bring their events, you're not going to get these events. And we love having them at Gillette, but they're great for the economy of the state and the region. And Army, Navy, I, I don't want to speak for the athletic directors of both schools, but they saw 
when they were deciding on this venue, they saw the plans. And I do think the GP atrium and the north end zone elements really is what, what put the whole building over the top for them. And so I, I do think it matters. I know with the World Cup that if we hadn't had been making the capital investments that we've made since the building opened, we, we couldn't have met the standard. They wouldn't, they wouldn't have come here. So, so the answer is, yeah, I think it makes a big difference. And I'll tell you this weekend, uh, this, uh, two weekends ago now, sorry, when Springsteen was here, yeah. um, the first time the video board was really used with a full stadium event functionally was during um, his encore, they turned the lights on in the building and when he was playing Born to Run, um, the lights are on and Bruce has everybody waving. Well, they, they turned the video board on and had a huge shot of the crowd. The stage was at the opposite end and Bruce was interacting with the crowd on the, because now he could see it. It's not behind him. And, and I, know, I know for a fact he really enjoyed it. And so I hope that other artists now too think about, hey, when we go play Gillette, we can do some really cool stuff. So when they're thinking about that extra night or they only have so many cities they can hit, hopefully this just makes us a bigger selling point. Yeah, and to have that reaction from someone who is playing stadiums all over the world is such incredible validation. Yeah, no, his, his tour manager, George Travis, who's been with him since the 70s and is a local, a local Boston guy, he actually asked if he could go up to the lighthouse and, and, and he went up to the lighthouse during the rising and the stadium's dark and there's just some spotlights and uh, he showed me the, the pictures that they took from up there. He's like, that's just amazing. So clearly it's not just another cookie cutter bowl, it's, it's a seating bowl, it's a, it's a venue that has its own identity and unique features that should hopefully encourage more and more events to come. Well, and even before you get into the stadium, I mean, I know you're changing the fan experience with respect to parking. You know, saying if, you're, if you'll stay later, tell me a little well, bit about Well, we wanted, that. well, a couple things. Clearly, our biggest, our biggest fan season ticket member, guest pinch point, whatever you want to call it, on full stadium events, be it Patriot Games, or concerts is the access and the egress. And um, starting this year for Patriot Games, and we did it for concerts this summer, uh, parking is, is free. So you, when you come into the building, the real pinch point on the end, because people meter that out over time, the real point, pinch point was taking the cash. Right. That's no longer there, so traffic should flow freely in our lots. We added, because it's free, we used to rely on other lots in the area to take some of the volume. We had to add a little over 3,000 parking spaces here. We've done that. Wow. And that probably represented about a 15 or $20 million investment. But now we have enough parking spaces for everybody. Parking is, is, is free, is included with your ticket. And what we've done the last few years is we had had free parking if you were willing to wait till an hour and 15 minutes after the event ended. Obviously now there wouldn't be value to that. So what we decided to do was for anybody that's willing to wait an hour and 15 minutes after the game ends to exit, we're going to give you a $50 Visa gift card when you come in. You can use it at the game that day, you can save it up, and you know, over the course of a season that's $500. We'll pay you to park. You can go to one of the Patriot Place venues. We have the Cross Pavilion stays open if you want to hang out inside and just watch television. Just you don't, there's no, just walk right into it. It's in the back of the north end zone. And, and hopefully if we can, you know, last season we had almost 2,000 cars a game just to park for free. If we can in increase that, you really do improve the flow out and, and you know, it sets the right expectation because if you're getting paid to wait a little, you know, it's not as bad. Especially in a place with so many offerings. Well, yeah. And if so people plan their day, you can do that. And so we're excited about that and we think, we think that that will help the egress time. We also think it's something that might start to be copied around, uh, around the league. I have to think too, for you looking ahead to this next game, there is real pride and joy in being able to say thank you to Tom Brady and to welcome him back like this. What are, what are you feeling right now ahead of this game? 
Well, look, Tom, it'll be awesome to see our fans have a chance to say thank you because obviously when he left uh, at the end of the 19 season, people didn't know what was going to happen. So the fans really didn't have a chance. They had a chance when he came back that first year uh, in, in the opposing uniform. But, but that's different. That's different. <laughs> that's, that's different. This will be a chance to celebrate him. But as you'll hear on Sunday, there's a lot more coming because uh, a, a quick little thank you at halftime probably isn't, isn't enough. And what, what Tom has meant uh, to the team and just to New England at large, um, it's hard to put into words. And I just feel a very close emotional tie to him too so and you know the other interesting thing Tom's first uh, first two seasons here he to show how young Gillette really is or to show how long Tom really played he played at Foxborough Stadium his first two seasons and you know now we're talking <laughs> about major renovations to the stadium that he opened raising that first championship banner I mean it really it puts in perspective just how extraordinary his career was because when he started playing and this is the first NFL Sunday he won't be suiting up on an opening day and his first two seasons were in a seven million dollar <laughs> stadium that you know was right at the back of that end of the stands and now we're talking we built this stadium and we're talking about the you know over a quarter of a billion dollars we invested in this end zone so it just speaks to how amazing he is. Yeah, it's, it is, does really put it in perspective when you think of the timeline that way. For you, could you have imagined 20 years ago that all of this would be here, that we'd be talking about all of these events and this in, incredible place? You, I don't think I could have imagined the scale and the depth of everything that we've been lucky enough to experience here. I do know that when we opened Gillette, we had a vision because it was really the first time that there was a true modern state-of-the-art outdoor venue in the, it's such a great sports market and we hadn't yeah. had one. It, it was always our goal and desire, as I said at the start, to leave the open spaces and to th watch what was happening in the industry, watch what, what guests want in a building, and then have the space to invest the capital to make those changes and keep it current. So I think that was our plan, and I'm, I'm happy that we've been able to do that, but the magnitude of what's gone on in this building, I couldn't have envisioned that. 